What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Legacy Evolution Deluxe Class Axle Grease. I'm always a massive fan when they bring out some of these new Junkions because if I was going to be honest, I think so far there have been some of the best characters to be released as part of Evolution. But anyway, as we check out the box art, we get a sick image of her kind of transformed into that post-apocalyptic vehicle mode. We also get some additional images of her in robot mode and notice how she is looking vaguely similar to a Transformers animated character, which don't worry we'll discuss later on in the video but as we come around here to the back of the box she does look fantastic you know they basically go through how you can break her apart into many individual segments much like we've seen from both scrap hook and crash bar so yeah this should definitely be a pretty fun figure to check out so let's get her out here let's stack her up alongside some of the other junkions and see how she compares alongside the robots in disguise tow line and here we have Axel Grease, and this is one mighty fine looking Transformers figure. As I'm sure you guys may have gathered if you've checked out my reviews for the previous two Junkions, at the moment they haven't failed to impress me in the design department. And because this figure is heavily based on the Scrap Hook mold, who is so far my favourite out of the bunch, I think the same can absolutely be said here for Axel Grease. And in some ways, she's actually the most interesting out of the bunch because I really like the spin they've put on her character. I mean, not only is she a female Junkion, but she's also one of the first ones I think we've seen in action figure form to be a Decepticon. So it's kind of a cool concept, you know, one I hope they take further as we go into Legacy Year 3. But anyway, as we check out the details, you know, really nicely painted and sculpted face. I do believe there are a few kind of design nods to the original G1 Autobot Junkion, that being Nancy. So... Yeah, that's pretty cool, but personally, my favourite part about the robot mode design would have to be the super sick looking chest piece. You know, we kind of get this wicked looking serrated grill with the Decepticon insignia, slap bang and centre, that looks really awesome. I do believe the arms are exactly the same as what we saw from Scrap Hook, but I do like how we can still see kind of the patchwork, which helps to go along with the vibe of kind of swapping the limbs out between these Junkions. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. I think the thighs, the shins and the feet are completely brand new, but as you guys can see, you know, she definitely does have a few Junkion traits, such as the spikes, which have been picked out in a nice purple would have been nice you know had they smacked on a bit of purple or silver to some of the excellent detail that we have on the inside of the leg but yeah overall for the robot mode she is looking pretty impressive and she also handles the vehicle mode kibble just as nicely as scrap hook so yeah that's pretty cool now in terms of her articulation pretty much smack on to what we saw from Scrap Hook. So the head is on a swivel. It will look left to right. She does, for some strange reason, still suffer from hollow head syndrome, which is something we've seen across the board for all of the Junkyards. Although I do kind of like how they sloped it down. You know, it does kind of look as if though it's a back of the helmet sculpt. But anyway, the shoulders will rotate the full 360. They'll also hinge out to the sides. But the swivel that we get out of the bicep is absolute pants because it's super stiff. And because they're using this kind of gummy plastic for the elbow joint, it takes next to nothing to pop this clean off which whilst may not be the end of the world in terms of robot mode definitely can be kind of annoying especially during transformation because there is quite a bit of force required to kind of peg the two arms together and to kind of expand upon that the elbows are super loose i mean as you guys can see it doesn't take much at all for them to flop down without any accessories when you smack on some weapons it's pretty much game over so yeah that's definitely unfortunate but we do get a very sturdy wrist swivel the waist can rotate the full 360 the hips can go way past 90 so yeah that's kind of cool you know you can definitely get her into some pretty sweet high kicks they'll also go back roughly to that far she can do the split a bit of a swivel just beneath the knee and then finally here for the feet they can go forwards backwards rock side to side and yeah she also does bend here at the knee for those of you wondering but that is pretty much axel grease in robot mode let's check out her accessories now it's here where I think personally this figure becomes super interesting because while she does come with a lot of weapons, much like we saw from Scrap Hook, some of the new ones they've packed in definitely makes me think that maybe we'll see them in the future, potentially on a Transformers animated lockdown retool. So for example, as you guys can see, we do get these two sections here, which can combine to kind of form her engine block in vehicle mode. But am I crazy or does this kind of look vaguely familiar to Ratchet's EMP blaster that lockdown sported throughout the majority of Transformers animated? and to kind of go further into that she also comes with these pieces and for some strange reason they still kept the hook that we saw with scrap hook despite her vehicle mode not being a towing truck and when you kind of smack this in there and then peg this onto her hands personally i think it's almost a dead ringer for a transformers animated lockdown so i do think that maybe as we head into legacy year three there is a potential repaint slash retool that we'll see and personally i would love to see it. and i also think that there are plans for them to take trash master who's the next voyager junkie on and potentially turn 
turn him into an animated Rekgar. So, yeah, it's going to be super awesome. But, yeah, those are some of the weapons she comes with. She also comes with those triple smokestacks, which we also saw with Scraphook. And then there is also another blaster. So, yeah, she definitely ain't slacking in the accessory department. But, personally, I just think they are super interesting, especially these two. And who knows, maybe I'm clutching at straws, but as we jump into a few comparisons, here we have Axel Grease alongside that Transformers animated lockdown. And even in robot mode, there are a few design similarities, especially in the foot department. You know, if they were to slightly change the design here of the chest piece, they could replicate what we saw here from lockdown. And you'll see even more similarities when we get both of these transformed into vehicle mode. But yeah, those accessories, at least to me at the moment, are a dead giveaway that eventually, maybe we could see a legacy Transformers animated lockdown, which I would absolutely love love to see. But anyway, as we jump into a few junkie on comparisons, here we have Axel Grease alongside the Robots in Disguise Legacy toe line. Now, I didn't do a review on this figure because it is basically just a straight up repaint of Scrap Hook, but I will very briefly touch base with it here. Very cool color, you know, definitely does remind me of something that would be ripped straight out of Scooby-Doo. It does come with a brand new head sculpt, kind of reminds me of a Tarantulas face. You know, if Tarantulas was to rescan himself into an Earth-based vehicle, this is exactly how I would expect him to look. But yeah, it's not a bad looking repaint, you know, maybe I wish they could have took things a little further in the re-sculpting department because it's not a dead ringer to how he appeared in Robots in Disguise, but in terms of the colour scheme, it is definitely very, very bold. And, you know, if you're a fan of Robots in Disguise, then it's not a bad figure to pick up because, again, it is based on Scrap Hook, who is such a sick mould. Which, talking of, because I've been hyping him up for the best part of this video, here we have him. And as you guys can see, both of these are mould buddies, but I do think they did a pretty good job, especially in the redeco department here for Axel Green and also in terms of what they re-sculpted because whilst it may not be obvious upon first glance as I said previously you know pretty much the thighs the shins and the feet are brand new the chest piece is brand new as so is the face and the entire kind of back piece which we'll see more of in vehicle mode is completely brand new and some of the new weapons that she comes with really does create for an entirely different look in terms of the back of the vehicle so yeah she's definitely interesting you know to see them just change a few pieces and basically get a brand new character out of this mold does make me excited to see as to what they could come up with in terms of other characters you know for example, could we potentially be seeing more Transformers animated characters out of these Junkions, such as Rekgar, such as Animated Lockdown? And then finally, here we have her alongside the most recently released Junkion, that being Crash Bar. And I actually didn't realise just how tiny this figure was until I whacked her out for a comparison. But as you guys can see, yeah, definitely a return to form in terms of the scale for these Junkions. And unfortunately, whilst he was a very good figure, it is looking like maybe he'll be the weakest out of the way because I'm just going to be honest, I am such a sucker for that Scrap Hook mould. Now, as we jump into the transformation, if you've converted Scrap Hook, then you should be fine in transforming this figure, although there are just a few things which are slightly different in terms of how the accessories smack onto her. So, in terms of kicking things off, you're going to want to come down here to the feet, just basically take the feet and smack them into these pieces. Do the exact same here for this side, so just shift this down, snap that into place. We can now combine the two pieces, come up here to the chest, and one thing which I think I failed to mention earlier on is that I really like how they fixed the gappage issue between the neck and the chest. That was something that kind of bugged me on the scrap hook figure. So yeah, that's kind of cool. But then you're going to come here to the wrists, basically take them and rotate them outwards so that these ports are kind of facing each other just like that. Do the exact same here for this side. We can then rotate at the waist. So the front is now facing the back. Take these little sections here and just open them up like this. You'll then want to take the shoulders, bring these pieces here inwards, and then take this entire assembly, just shift this away from the main chest piece, take the neck assembly, snap that there into place, and then use the hip joints to basically fold this here all the way in. And to tell the truth, you can actually lock these pieces in now. So just snap that in there. Now we come to my least favorite part about the transformation, and this was something that bothered me on Scrap Hook, but gonna be honest, due to the very loose elbow joints is even worse here on Axle Grease. So so what you're going to want to do is rotate here at the shoulders so you're left with something along the lines of this and then rotate here at the bicep. Now nine times out of ten, at least on my own personal copy, these love to pop off and in terms of reverse transformation, it's pretty much impossible to get her back into robot mode without these detaching due to how tight the little clasps are which peg into these pieces in just a sec. But anyway, you're going to want to take this piece, smack that in there and then what's going to happen is we're going to click it in once, click this section in take these pieces and that little tab is going to snap itself into that little slot. So just try and line things upwards to make it a little easier for yourself in just a second. So line that up. We can then just combine the two halves just like this. Snap that in. 
and bang there we have axel grease transformed into just the base vehicle mode without any of the accessories and you know what even like this it doesn't look too bad you know i really like the detail that we have here for the windscreen you know again very post-apocalyptic really does remind me of something out of a mad max movie but anyway as i said previously you can take both of those blasters combine them into kind of the front engine piece which does look awesome i mean the second we smack this in there you guys are telling me that we're not going to get a transformers animated lockdown out of this honestly i definitely think we're going to but then you're going to want to spin your attention around here to the back and take both of her blasters. Now, to be honest, you could leave the hook in if you wanted to. But for this, I'm going to remove it. Now, these also combine. So you are just going to want to snap these pieces in. And the way this works, I thought was super clever because it pretty much completely changes the look of the vehicle when in comparison to the tow truck that Scrap Hook was. So these are basically going to find themselves going into these little circular ports. So let's snap them in there. And as you guys can see, it pretty much fills out the entire rear of the vehicle, which I thought was pretty awesome. And then for a few very quick finishing touches, we can take these triple stacks and just smack them here onto the sides, much like we could with Scrap Hook. And in terms of the hook you can just peg it into this little slot and there she is fully combined with all of her accessories and yeah it does definitely look awesome i love how we kind of had these massive thrusters at the back of the vehicle i mean i can imagine her turbocharging across the battlefield in order to take out some autobots so yeah that's pretty sweet but it's a very cool vehicle mode i mean there's not much else i can say i love the kind of bearing ram that we have here at the front again very similar to transformers animated lockdown just all the way throughout this thing it is incredibly incredibly impressive Steve. Now, as we jump into a few comparisons, here we have her alongside that Transformers animated lockdown. And again, there are definitely some similarities, especially in terms of the design of the front of the vehicle. And if you were to give me the entire catalog of Transformers legacy molds, and you were to say, pick one of these to kind of create an animated universe version of lockdown out of, I do think I would pick this because I do think it is the closest. And whilst it's not a dead on match to what we saw in Transformers animated, if we were to kind of go from the legacy Transformers animated prowl, then they do kind of modify the design. So, yeah, again, I definitely do think that this is just a retool waiting to happen. Here is how she stacks up alongside that Robots in Disguise tow line, aka the Scooby Doo Mystery Machine. And to kind of go back to my earlier point, you know, yes, it is a really funky, kind of cool looking color deco, but it doesn't really look like tow line from Robots in Disguise. I do, in some ways, wish, you know, maybe they could have pushed the bow out a little further, much like we're seeing here with Axel Grease, and just retooled a few pieces to make it look a little more similar to how he appeared back in the day. But, I mean, it's definitely. A unique repaint and we're getting more robots in disguise characters and one which I never in a million years thought we'd see so I guess I can't complain too much here's how she stacks up again alongside her mold mate scrap hook so to kind of go back to my previous point there is a lot which has been changed here I mean in terms of the vehicle mode they've actually gotten rid of quite a few pieces from scrap hook I mean for example this entire section is completely brand new you can see that in terms of the design of it and especially the details that we have for the side of the window the entire front of the truck is brand new and those weapons make all of the difference because it basically turns it from being a tow truck into this super sick kind of turbocharged vehicle so yeah it's kind of awesome to see what they can just do by retooling a few pieces of a mold and then finally here we have her alongside crash bar and as advertised on the back of the box yes she still does come with that kind of evo fusion capability and the kind of advertisement does show that you basically pull this section here off take these pieces here detach it and there is a perfect slot and tab which i believe i showcased in the crash bar review anyway that you can basically take this section to and smack it onto the side to kind of create a side car now as we know from the various different combinations that i've showed on the channel and that i'm pretty certain you guys have pulled off for yourselves you you can definitely do a little better in terms of evo fusion i mean especially now we have quite a few of the same mold you can create some really wacky weird kind of color combos which i'll definitely hope to show you guys in this video especially in the opening segment but yeah that is her evo fusion gimmick and so, wrapping up on this review for the Legacy Evolution Deluxe Class Axel Grease with a nice little cameo from the Robots in Disguise tow line. Overall, she's a very good figure. I mean, in terms of something which is basically just a retool slash repaint, I think she's come out really nicely. I mean, she's not lazy. They haven't just basically swapped the head out like we're seeing with tow line. They have given her some brand new weapons and in some areas, some quite drastic overhauls in terms of additional new pieces. I mean, personally, I love the way the vehicle mode looks. I think it might just be my favorite out of the two modes. It does look 
super sick. I definitely think this mold as a whole screams lockdown pre-tool, especially when you begin to check out some of the additional accessories. I mean, why did they still pack in the hook? I definitely think there was a reason for that, which we'll hopefully find out about sooner rather than later. But if you're into these Junkions, then yeah, she's definitely a very nice addition to the collection. And if you're like myself, you loved the scrap hook mold, then I do think you're going to really like her. In terms of toe line, unless you have a massive attachment to robots in disguise, then I think you can give him an easy pass because besides the color scheme and the new head, he's not really offering much at all. And I definitely think they could have done something a little more interesting in terms of retooling, much like we've seen here from Axel Grease. But I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you guys think of both of these figures? Will you be adding either of them to your collection? Until my next video, I thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you then.